This is honestly never a driver I have ever, ever considered before until you said I should. And I'm talking about the Cleveland Launcher XL2. Yes, the two is down here. Now, this driver right here is definitely at the cheaper end of the market. By all means, it's not cheap. It's £379. So I'm guessing if my maths is semi-okay, it's about $450. But for sure, it's definitely at the cheap end of that market. And this could potentially be one of the longest and most forgiving drivers of 2024. Why, I hear you say, well, I'm gonna have to read this. This is what it describes it as. It's big and it's built for one thing, sending bombs down the middle. The all new Launcher XL2 driver delivers more distance, forgiveness and consistency than ever before. Let's see what all the hype's about. First thing, I would say this. The head cover feels really premium and these colors like really do pop. And you can see I've not even taken the wrapper off this yet. Oh, the first time out. I guess first impressions, this looks really nice. This sort of shiny area here. It's almost like you can imagine it funneling the air as you're hitting, it's almost like a bit of a speed slot sort of thing here. Now they've also sent me a Tensai S-Flex 55 grams. I guess like a shaft that I would use. First impressions, it feels a good weight. And what I mean by that is it feels like a weight of a driver that I would use. It's not too light, which sometimes you find with these XL drivers because they're designed to help people generate more speed. But yeah, weight feels good. One thing you've got to see is this head shape. Like, can you see how sort of elongated it is at the back? Like, this bit here, it's almost like triangulated out. Shiny top frame with like sort of details on the back. I don't think you get much glare from that because even if it's shiny, it is dark. Slight nice detailing just in here where the center of the club is. But look at that shape. I think you can see it a lot better here. This triangulated area at the back. It definitely looks oversized, so it's living up to that XL nature. And then the face, I like the matte finish. Really nice look to this club. So first impressions is that I think it's actually a really good looking driver. Now this loft is set to 10 and a half degrees for me. I better take this off and start putting it to the test. But the question is, who is this driver actually aimed at? Well, I need to hit a few to give you that honest opinion. Because usually in the past I would have said this is aimed at a higher handicapper. But if you look at the way every single, and I mean every single manufacturer, has gone this year, the XL bigger headed max heads have definitely been made for everybody. So even like your scratch and low handicap golfers. Now I'm dying to know what this sounds like. Let's start with hitting some away. Give you some numbers. That looks so big down behind the ball, you know, so big. Inviting and big, and this shaft feels really quite long. Now I've taken that wrapper off the grip. It feels like really long now I've got my hands on it properly. Oh my Lord, that was deafening. Ow, ow. I got it slightly too side. Like, you can, I just got it just like around here. But that was honestly, seriously deafening. And just look at these numbers. 282 yards total, just short of 90 feet apex. Not spinny, not high. 161 miles an hour ball speed and 111.9 clubhead speed. 2,800 spin. Now these are right in the sweet spot. Now those numbers aren't to be grumbled at for the first one, over 160 miles an hour ball speed, great club head speed, good distance. That sound, honestly, that sound is still like reverberating in my ears. I really do hope that came across on camera. Let's hit some more. How straight is that? That is launched, like seriously good. I'm on a left to right wind here, and usually I would lose that ball that way. My ears are reverberating still. And the spin is low. Well, not low. It's exactly where it should be, which again, comes back to my question of, who exactly is this driver aimed at? That spin was just under two and a half thousand. And look at that distance. 
287 yards. And for me, for this driver to even be considered and go in a head-to-head -head battle against the most forgiving driver of 2024, which I think I said was the Mizuno, which again, seriously surprised me, the numbers have to be on point. First two, they are. Distance, spin rate, club head speed, ball speed are exactly where I'd want them to be. So just to give you that ballpark figure, I'd want anything above 160 miles an hour ball speed, over 112 miles an hour club head speed, around two and a half to 2,700 spin. For me, I'm considering it's a high spinning driver because it's an XL head. And this sounds optimistic, but over 285 total, touching 300, it has to be there. I tell you what, this has been a great shout from you all so far. You can sort of understand why that noise is so loud. Like, just tapping it, it sounds tinny, and it feels a little bit tinny off the face. <sighs> Would that stop me buying it? Yet, yeah. mm. I need to hit a few more shots to decide this. It's also worth pointing out that you can loft this driver all the way down to nine and all the way up to 12. As I said before, I've got this set on 10.5. Now, you also wanna know if you're buying this driver, what technology are you getting? Ooh, I've just noticed that little bit of a slot at the back. That's quite cool. Let's have a look at that down behind the ball. Now in this season's model, there are three main pieces of technology that you need to know about. The main frame XL face. And essentially this is a variable thickness pattern that maximizes flex impact, giving you more distance. Now with the name, the second piece of technology is the XL head design. And all you're gonna know, the previous models, this has increased MOI. And what you would see with this, that they're saying, is a high launching ball flight. I'll be honest. I'm yet to see that when testing. And the final piece you need to know about is the rebound frame. So just having one flex zone, there is two, which gives you more ball speed across the entire phase as they both flex in sync. Now, what's also very interesting, as well as all the technology we've just discussed, there's an eight gram weight here in the grip. And I didn't realize this was actually hitting after a few shots, but it does feel very stable through the impact. And I think for a good high swing speed player, you want sort of that solidity here in the grip end because that's your feedback. If it feels soft, flimsy, you're not going to enjoy that hit. So the idea behind that eight gram weight is to feel lighter through the takeaway, more stable through impact. And without me actually understanding that technology, that's definitely what I felt. The weighting feels really good. Right, let's hit four more away. We'll go through some averages. I'm enjoying this driver apart from the sound, and I'm yet to decide if that's a big, big point on whether I would buy it or not. Let me know what you think. How important is sound for you? Look at that flight again. I can't miss. That was slightly toe side and probably would have gone left on a normal driver. 162 ball speed. Ridiculous. And again, this didn't disappoint. But the one thing that I'm just not sure about right now is this sound. Like I just said, what do you think of this sound? Okay, let me grab some more tea pegs before we hit some more away. Now, I'm actually really surprised right now. If we had a look at these ball flights right here, I would definitely class this ball flight as a medium to, I'm not even gonna say high, I would just class this as a medium flighted driver. Now that's surprising me, because if you think of XL drivers, extra large, bigger MOI, more forgiving, more spin, that would usually produce, in my eyes, ridiculous amounts of spin, really high ball flights, if you're a golfer who swings this faster. I'm not seeing that. My apex is around 95 feet, and my spin is just under two and a half thousand. Seriously impressive. Let's hit some more. I also think I've made my mind up about this sound and who this driver is aimed at. I can't miss with it. Like I've towed that slightly again, and I've done that on a lot of them. Maybe that's the length of the shaft, but these numbers are awesome. If I'm being honest, I think I've hit most of them around here, but this shaft feels a lot longer than what I'm used to. And that usually helps people generate a lot more club head speed. I honestly think this driver is worthy of going in a head to head battle against the Mizuno. I really do. I really, really do. I think we need to wander down the fairway and just see where these have all finished. I really do. Come on, let's go have a look. 
But before we walk down the fairway, let's have a look at these numbers. 2,643,000 spin. I mean, that's not high. That's not what I would expect from an XL head driver. Then we've got 286 yards total, 75 feet apex. That's the top of the ball's flight. And have a look how impressive this club head speed is and ball speed right where I said it needed to be. Now, I wouldn't usually do this. I'd usually just, you see the ball flight, but I'm honestly shocked at the quality and the consistency value. Right, before we go through the averages, let me give you my opinion on the sound. I really hate the sound. I really do. And I think for some golfers, it's going to be a little bit of a stumbling block on you buying it. Like, remember the ping drivers about 20 years ago? Even 15, 10 years ago. Awful sounding, performed great, really consistent, but you knew someone was using a ping. Three fairways away, you are going to know what driver this person is using and what I'm using right here. It's really high pitched and it's, well, I guess the material that they've used and it sounds very different to the carbon headed driver that I'm using or the carbon face driver that I'm using in the QI10. Right, we are getting close to these gold balls. Sound wise, oh, I think it's going to affect some people, which is a real shame. So have a look at this right here. The three white gold balls that I hit in this section just here. That's seriously impressive. And look where these green gold balls have finished. One just here, one at the top of the screen, and two over in the semi-rough. By the way, who is a fan of these green gold balls? Let me know what you think. But look where these gold balls are finished. It's seriously impressive to see how far these gold balls I hit right here. That is seriously consistent grouping. Like, I mean, a seriously consistent grouping that no golfer can ever, ever grumble at. So I guess let's talk some averages. I've got them written down here. But how interesting was that? How good was that grouping down on the fairway? So talking averages here, and then we'll go through exactly who I think this driver is aimed at. And I can't believe I'm going to say what I'm going to say, but we'll talk about it in a second. I'm just going to try really smooth get in the bag. But anyway, averages. 287 yards total. Now a little bit short, but I feel like it was going maybe a little bit further on that rollout down that fairway. It's definitely where I'd expect the gold ball to finish. Ball speed, average 160 miles an hour. Spin, average 2,502. And club head speed, averaging 112.8 miles an hour. So averages are right in that honey spot, that sweet spot of where they need to be. So in terms of, can this go up against the Mizuno? 100%. I need to do a head-to-head -head battle, and if you want to see that, let me know down below in the comments. For the price point, this is just a blooming awesome driver. The head cover, the quality, the shaft that I've got in this, the launch, the hit, it's great. The only thing, like I say, the bugbear is the sound. But who is this driver aimed at? In the past, I would have just looked at this and gone, yeah, you know what, it's aimed at a higher handicap golfer that needs a little bit of help. But the fact that it's not got an incredible amount of offset and the spin numbers for me are absolutely spot on. This driver is seriously aimed at anybody. So if you're a golfer who wants to get a little bit of help in the air, you can loft this up more. If you're a higher swing speed player that just wants more forgiveness and hit the fairway like I just did there at a cheaper price point, you could loft this down. But I'll be honest, at the 10 and a half degrees, I found it worked absolutely perfectly. I'm gonna say it. It's a driver that really needs to be looked at. I never thought of it. Maybe you should think about it. Well, in fact, some of you said I should look at this. For the price point, this is a driver that's seriously competitive in 2024. And once I put it up against a head-to-head -head battle, I honestly think it could be one of the best, longest, and most forgiving drivers of 2024.